you want to do some distillation, but you're not sure how to go about it. Let me take you back to basic and explain how I see distillation. Hey everyone, Distiller Grilling here, one of your favorite home and hobby distillers. So this is part of my Back to Basics series and today we're handling distillation. Now we know since ancient times the concentration of alcohol by the application of heat to a fermented liquid is one of the oldest types of distillation. But today there's so much more to it, so much more variety from home distilling to commercial distilling, from chemical or chemistry to petrochemical industrial. It's so wide a variety of distillation types. So for me, distillation at its basics is the purification of a liquid by successive evaporation and condensation again. That's where we want to separate liquids from one another due to the differences in boiling points. Now the boiling point is that part of the liquid that as it's heated up slowly, it will start to undergo a phase change and go from a liquid to a vapor. Now your boiling point is also very corresponding to the temperature at which that vapor pressure is equals to your ambient pressure. Meaning that your boiling point is very dependent on pressure, the ambient pressure. What does it mean for us? If I have a wash and a mash here at sea level at a high atmospheric pressure and I start to apply heat to it and it vaporizes. It will vaporize differently if I take that same whole mesh and I take it to a high or elevated region where it's got a lower pressure. A good example is water. If you take water, it boils normally at 100 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric at sea level. If you take that same water and you go to Mount Everest, that's got an atmospheric pressure of 0.25 that water will only boil at 69 degrees. It's a much lower temperature than it would be on sea level that's got one atmosphere. So that's why your boiling point is very dependent on pressures. Now the device we use in distillation is called a still and it consists minimally of three parts. First we got the pot. That's where you put in your mash and your wash and you start to heat it up and it will start to vaporize. Secondly, you got your condenser. Now as these vapors now rise up, you need to condense it back down and change it the face back into a liquid. And thirdly, you got a receiver. That's where you will now collect all these purified liquid or distillate that you have and you catch it into a pot. Now as you heat up your wash and mesh and the temperature starts to rise, your more volatile components or liquids will start to change phase first because of their lower boiling point. And that vapors will now start to rise up into your column, get condensed and go back into a liquid. If you run your pot at a very high temperature and it starts to heat up very fast, that vapor will start to rise and actually will entrap some of the molecules or water liquid molecules with it and take it with it and actually when it does condense it's a component with different types of boiling points and we don't necessarily want that. That's why we, you will hear the term low and slow. You would tend to run your pot at a very lower temperature and very slower so you can get the chance for that vapors to more gradually heat up and start to vaporize as it reaches its boiling point and then when the next one reaches boiling point will go up so you'll get a more redefined product that comes out at the end. Now during the process of distillation, this spirit that you are producing that comes out will, go, will undergo different phases or different cuts as it goes through the run. We know them as four shots, heads, hearts and tails. Four shots is the first 5% of your run. That's normally your more volatile liquids like methanol. And methanol is a very extremely toxic and volatile liquid and you do not want to consume it at all. You will definitely distinct methanol by the sharp solvent smell and you must not consume it. It's very toxic and it can cause blindness. Best is to separate it from all the rest of your other um, liquids that you want and discard it immediately. Your next 
30% of your run is called the head. Now the head still has some volatile liquids in it, especially like acetone. It's got a softer solvent smell, but you can still definitely smell it. It's not as bad as methanol, but it can still make you sick and give you a terrible hangover. So it's also better to get your heads out of the way and discard it and do not put it at your end product. Now we come to the next 30% of your run and that's the sweet spot. That is the heart of your run. That's the stuff that we want. You will start to smell that acetone solvent smell will start to taper down and you will start to get a very sweet neutral smell from the ethanol and that's what we want. This is where a skillful distiller really shines out. Making a high quality hard cut is a game of senses. You would smell that sweet neutral smell and taste of the ethanol and that's what you want. If you guys want to find out more, go check out my video about fermentation where I explain to you how you can get those lovely ethanols. The last about 35% of your runs is the tails and you will definitely start to notice the tails by the smell and the taste. It will start to smell and, and taste very burny, almost like wet cardboard and you can almost see like an oil film starting to be, lie on top of your distillate and we do not want it. It's filled with a lot of carbohydrates and that's what we want in our end product. So best is also to separate it from your hearts. You can use different tails at a later stadium and try to distill out the last bit of alcohol that's left or otherwise you can just discard it and keep it away. Now the equipment and different types of stills you use can also have an effect on your separation process. If you have a pot still, it will give you one distillation, meaning that it's going to have one evaporation and one condensation. If you take that distillate, put it back in a pot and you run it a second time, you'll have a second evaporation and a second condensation, meaning a second distillation. And if you keep on repeating that process, you will now start to concentrate your alcohol and pick up your ABB and proof, but at the same time also decrease on flavor. So you will have to find that balance of what your product wants to be and what's the desired taste you want. Using a column still with bubble trays, you will effectively have a distillation on each bubble tray, meaning that each bubble tray on its own will cause a condensation of the vapor coming up and then reheat it and evaporize it again. So if you have got a column still with two bubble trays, you have one, two, three distillations in one run. So meaning that you can have, in theory, depending on how many trays you got, got to have multiple distillations in one run. Now, if you guys want to know more about bubble trays and perforator plate, go check out my video I did on that. There I can explain very nicely and in more detail how they work. Now, using a column still will give you a more defined product at the high ABV. Now, if you want an even higher defined product or a higher ABB product, you can use a reflux column. Now, a reflux column is the same as a normal column still, but it's got a reflux condenser right at the top or a defragonator. Now, that works with cooling water where you will now have 100% reflux is when you cool down all the vapor that comes up on the tower, you will cool it down and it will condense back down into the column. Nothing actually goes out and gets collected. All the vapor and condensate stays in the tower and goes round and around. So you can have, in a sense, an infinite number of distillations in your reflux still. Now, having a reflux column or a reflux still doesn't mean you have to use bubble trays or perforated plates. You can have a pipe with, full of packing as well with the reflux condenser right at the top long as you make sure that you've got enough liquid to vapor contact in the side that's packing, you will still have a very accurate and more redefined product that comes out. Now there's also vacuum distillation. Vacuum distillation is where you would add a vacuum pump to the end of your still and it will lower the pressure inside your whole still up until the boiler itself. Meaning that you're actually lowering the boiling point of your liquid so you mean you can distill at the lower temperature. Now vacuum distillation is especially used if you want to extract flavor out of botanicals at the lower temperature because you don't want to burn your botanicals. 
Now, all of these processes that I've been handling was based on a batch system, meaning that you've got your pot, you insert your wash or mash, and you distill it, and you get a product. You empty out your pot, get new wash, or use the low wines that you have made in it again, and you do it again. Now, on a larger scale and more in the industrial area, they use continuous distillation. Now, continuous distillation is where they have a distillation column and they've got a continuous feed, a continuous constant feed that comes in and that distillation tower then runs continuously for days, weeks and months on end. Most of the industry use fractional distillation with a continuous still. With this tower going up, they've got these different plates and on each plate as it continuously being fed and heats up this fractional distillation all the different boiling point liquids would tend to say get trapped on different type of plates this one's got a higher boiling point so it stays here at the bottom lower boiling point will stay here on the top and they would all collect on different plates and then they can start to draw off specific products on these plates especially on the petrochemical industry, use crude oil as a feed into the distillation tower. The lower boiling point and heavier components like your tar gets drawn off to the bottom. Here in the middle, you'll start to get your paraffins and petrols. And then right at the top, you get your jet fuels, your more volatile components. As long as you've got a constant feed of product that comes in, that fractional distillation tower can run for months and years at an end. I hope that helps you to understand the basics of distillation and gets you excited to go try it yourself. Until I post again, remember guys, to be awesome, to be kind, be yourself. Cheers.